Well, greetings again, friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Welcome to part two. 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 This is the follow-up to the building cigar box guitar necks where I was building these guys. And ah, so this will be a follow-up to that video. All right, so I got the heater turned on because it's a little bit cold in here. Putting on my, um, my work clothes so that I don't get stain on my good clothes. Uh, not that I'll be staining, actually I'm done staining. And I'll show you what I did. Oh, I did want to show you kind of a, little, a neat little trick I got here. So this here is one of my work aprons. And if you'll notice here, I have a wire. There's a little hook, a little fishing hook there. So this wire connects on this side. So it acts like a little belt. So what I do is I put this guy on. And then I grab this little hook. Bring it around this side and hook it into this little eyelet there. Ta-da! That's a hook hack. All right. Um, get you up to speed. I just stained this guy with some um, Brazilian rosewood stain. I sanded it down really smooth and I also fret dressed the ends of the frets. And this, this stain is wet right now so I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and then I'll steel wool it down and maybe hit it with a gloss. Again, this is gonna go with this Arturo Fuente box. So this is kind of what it'll look like here. Well, that's going to be striking, no doubt. Okay, so I'm going to let this. Um, yeah, why do I do that? I'll work myself into a corner. Okay, so I'm going to set this in the vice grip and let it dry. Now, this one here. I think I'm gonna hit the fretboard. I did hit it with a little bit of that, with the wet um, towel when I when I dried off this black stain, and the towel was the wet, and I just hit it, hit the top here, so it's kind of gray. Because remember, it was gray, but the reason why I hit it lightly like that is because if you notice, you can see those cuts, and um, those are saw cuts from the original, and I'm thinking. I don't know, man. I'm thinking I might just leave it original, just like that. If I did anything, I would I would hit it with some um, some of that stain that I got on that guy right there, the Brazilian rosewood. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I I haven't decided yet, and I am gonna fret that. So we'll, we'll fret this guy here today. Um, that's what we'll do next. Uh, but what I did want to show you was something that happened happened to me yesterday I did a video where it was the um, it was the jam session video two videos ago and on the outro of that video I did a section with the loop pedal remember this loop pedal all right we'll see how this switch is jacked up so it, this pedal was on the ground on the ground and I was doing something on my phone and I dropped my phone, and the phone came and landed directly on this switch. And then the switch thwing, sprang up because there's this little spring in here. See that little spring? So that spring was in there, and it sprung up. And so I'm sitting there, I'm standing there, and this, this thing does this. Thwing, just shot up, up. I was like, what the heck was that? Um, 
And so I tried, you know, putting it back in. I'm thinking, okay, it must have just popped out. So I put it back in. Nothing. So it was, it was, uh, it was a goner. So I was like sad. I'm like, oh, that piece of crap. So I took it apart. And uh, I'll take it apart here again. Just, I'm just taking the, uh, taking this guy off the bolt here that holds that thing on. And screws in the back. Fortunately, I do have in my junk collection, I actually have a bag of foot pedal switches. And these are the, uh, the momentary and they have two little leads on it. So this will be an easy, easy, easy fix. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a way to try it out because of uh, the power supply I left at work. So, um, I'll have to try it out. It's going to work. Trust me, it's just, it's just a matter of switching out the switch. Switching out the switch. But I, what, what I did want to point out to you, um, I don't know if you can see it on here, but if you look really close... You'll see the problem, and the problem is made in China. All right, so this switch here, let, watch, listen. There's like a little piece in there. So inside of here is the other half to, the, to this guy. It must have just broke off. So I'm going to desolder this dude and solder in this dude. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I've been um, heating up my soldering iron and it's hot. I need my reading glasses. Okay, here we go. Now with these switches, it doesn't matter which is red or, or um, cause they're just a momentary switch. So I'm just gonna take it off. I don't even need it soldered. I could just, uh, I can just cut it with wire, wire cutter. And then strip it. Look how easy this is gonna be. Two wires, two switches, and then plug it back together. As my friend who lives in Australia would say, too easy, Mike, too easy. Okay, and just to make everything go easy, I have this flux solder. Um, soldering flux, whatever you want to call it, which is just this goopy stuff. I get a little Q-tip and I um, tin tin up the ends of these things here. This just helps every all the solder to flow. And then I'll also put some on the switch here. Now another thing I like to do is get my solder. And I'm gonna pre pre solder it. I don't know if you can see this here. It's kind of off camera here. Let me uh, see here if I can do this without making a mess here. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I'm just going to. Some people call this tinning, and I'm just gonna. Put some a little bit of solder on each one of those legs. And then also put some solder on the wire. And then
This might be a little awkward because um, I'm trying to get it so that you can see it in the camera. Not that you need to see this, but yeah, all right, this is dumb. Dum 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 dum. Okay, this is where I need a third hand. Hey, can you do me a favor and reach and hold this thing together? All right, this is yeah, this ain't gonna work. Okay, how can I do this without burning my finger? There's no way. All right. Uh. You gotta see me struggle. You're probably not used to seeing me struggle. I'm struggling against gravity. Ah, oh, dang it. This is just not gonna work. All right, this is frustrating me. I'm about ready to cuss. Okay, here we go. Got it. Wow. Okay. And then, and what did I do with that little screw? I just set it down, huh? Right, right. There it is. Okay. Now this guy here is a little bit smaller than the other one, so there's a little bit, a little bit of wiggle room. Not bad. So. The odds of this thing working are 100%. I'm so confident that I don't even need to like test it before I button it up. I'm going to button this thing up with full confidence that it's going to work. Why? Because there's only two wires to solder. The black and the red. I don't know if you, it's kind of hard to see the black one, but done deal, done deal. Okay, I'm gonna do that later. Just buttoning it up. I'm gonna get going on this thing here. Okay, so you guys remember, remember the rules when you're putting the frets in. What are the rules? The first rule is to get rid of all the gunk in. The fret spot slots. Different ways to do it. However you do it, it's fine with me. I don't care. But you have to do it. You have to get all the gunk out of the fret slots. And there's definitely gunk in this this one here. And it's because I hit this thing with that black stain. So you can see it in the teeth. Okay, you know the drill, the headstock goes to my left. I will need three. One, two, actually two and a half strands of this medium fret wire. And one piece of jumbo. Alright, I'm going to tilt you down here so you can see the, the goings on going on down here. Remember, we cut this thing at an angle, just like that. And then we give it a little tap. And 
and a squeeze. All right, I'm gonna put this back here since I'm done with the jumbo. All right, start with my little 45 here. fast on this one. Sometimes you're left with a little tiny piece here. That's about a half an inch. I used to save these a long time ago. I stopped saving them. Another little half inch piece. At least we're consistent. That means that this neck is thinner than that one because I didn't have any left over on that one. Down to the wire. Get it? Down to the wire. Okay, now we're gonna grind down the fret ends. See, I told you it's gonna be a lot faster. Here's the grinder. On your marks, get set, grind.
I just run my fingers up and down to make sure there's no fret spike. And man, this one's good. No fret spike. Okay, so next. Let's see if you can read this. Can you read that? Fret Guru. Okay, now this file here has got teeth on one side, then it's smooth, then it has teeth on this side, and then it's smooth again. So watch this here. So the smooth side, the smooth side actually goes toward, or to the wood, and then the teeth side gets I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here's up close and personal here. So I'm gonna put the smooth side on the wood. So the smooth side is on the wood and then the tooth side is pressing against the fret. And then what I do is I go up and over to the top of the fret in one move. So it's like up and over. And I do that for every fret. Put it next, next to the fret, and then up and over. Next to the fret, smooth side down, and then up and over. This just takes that sharp edge off of the uh, fret. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so this one here I'm going reverse. And instead of up and over this way, I'm coming up, and I'm still going up and over, right? But I'm just starting off smooth side, and then up and over. So I'm only getting half of the fret on this pass. Okay, so I done done the uh, the headstock side of both fret of both frets or both sides of the fret. Now I turn it around. Now I'm going to do the heel side of both sides of the frets, up and over, up and over. Next, 220 grit sandpaper. And then I just polish down the edges of the frets. Now, if you rub off some of the stain, it's okay because we can just go back and put some more stain on it. And you'll be able to tell just by looking at it. And what we're after is a um, kind of a glossy, high gloss mirror finish on the edges of these frets. And you can just tell just by looking right at it. And sometimes I don't I don't go back and and touch it up because I like the way it looks when you have some of this wood being revealed right here at the edge makes it look um, makes it look legit okay 
Yeah, dang. <laughs> That's awesome. I think I'm going to leave that one alone. Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in this light or not here, but I, I'm taking off some of the... Um, there, you can kind of see it really good right here. Some of the original wood is showing through on these edges right here where I'm sanding these fret ends. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. Okay, let's get this side now. This is what happens to your sandpaper. Yep, burn holes in it. Now, if you keep your thumb on this thing here and go back and forth, your thumb gets on fire. And if you're not careful, yeah, you get a blister. I want to take it off every once in a while and let it cool down. <sighs> or just get a new piece of sandpaper. Okay, the ultimate test is feel, right? You gotta, you gotta just run your hands like you're playing, feeling, and man, it's just smooth, smooth, smooth. And um, also looks. And this one here has got got the smooth feel. There's nothing sticking out. Everything is nice and nice and smooth. And it looks awesome, man. Look at that. All right. I always debate what to do next, what to do next. I think, um, just be, out of curiosity, I think I'm gonna hit this thing with some steel wool. Um, and just to see if it'll... Just to see what the, effect, what the effect is. That's part of the fun of building these things, right? Is you get to experiment, try different things. Some things work. Oh yeah, check it out. See how that grain that just pops out? Oh my gosh. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, steel wool, sometimes you get like those little metal splinters in your hand. Just gotta suck it up, dude. Don't be a wimp. Ah! Hi! Ouch! Ouch! Liking this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Am I off camera? Can you see this? Okay, I don't want to get too carried away. I want to leave. I just want it to be subtle. Oh, 
Okay, okay, awesome. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that just the bomb? Sheesh, man, steel wool. See how it took, took more off here than it did there? So it's a real kind of, not a random, yeah, right there, look at that. All right, it's magic, PFM, pure freaking magic. I just want to get this heel. Plus it makes it a lot, it makes it feel a lot smoother as well. All right, I'm gonna hit the top. Okay. Now, doesn't that make it look like it's like an old, legit, and that's just the grains. It makes it look like that's where the strings go, right? What What are the odds? Okay. All right. My gosh. Sometimes you're just um, I, I'm. Sometimes I'm just amazed. Seriously, um, things you don't plan for just happen like that. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So now what? What's next? What's next? Um, tuners, I guess we could um, groove the the. We can put the grooves in the zero fret for the strings. Um, okay, I think that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do next. Okay, so I also have this little template here that I use for centering my notch in the cigar box. Well, if you notice, right here, I have three little divots. Convenient. How convenient. And so I just use that as my template for my... A magic, a magical marker. And then just center this bad boy up here. And just a dot. So that's where we're going to put the little grooves for the strings and the zero fret. The trusty triangle file. And you don't really need much on here. You don't, this is where you do not go to town, okay? I just put it exactly where I need it and I just give it a one pass. It's like a scratch. You're not gonna sit there and you're not gonna saw this thing, okay? You're just gonna just, you're just gonna give it a scratch. Now, now what I've done is I've created a little hole, right? And then I can give it a little something. And that's just to make it give it more definition. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Man, I'm liking the way that looks. That is awesome. All right, next is tuners. And then maybe some creative inlays for the position marker so you can see it. We'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope you like it. If you did, be sure to leave a nice comment. Be sure to like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, there is a link in my uh, banner in my YouTube channel, and I'll also put information below in the video description. All right. So that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Later.